Hey guys, Todd here from Great Escape Farms. And right in front of me here is a sweet scarlet gumi bush, also known as Elignus multiflora. It is a, crane, a Ukraine variety, hardy down to USDA zone four. So zones four through eight. It is a perennial deciduous small shrub and it likes well-drained site with at least a half a day of sunshine. How it can handle soil that is light, sandy, medium loamy, or heavy clay soils. It grows four to six feet, however mine's pushing seven feet right now, and it is self-fertile, so you don't need another one around to produce fruit. It has fragrant creamy white flowers in May, and it has tasty and nutritious little red berries the size of pie cherries in late June. This plant is also a nitrogen fixer, kind of like autumn olive. Actually, it's somewhat in the same family as autumn olive, although not quite as invasive. So you, if you put it near something, it will fix nitrogen in the soil and actually help plants around it. It is uh, filled with vitamins A and E and contains more heart healthy uh, of the nutrient lycopene than even a tomato has. So today we're going to go ahead and take some cuttings of this plant. And uh, what we want to do is grab it where the new growth is. Let me see if I can find some here. I may have to take some leaves out. And I also want to point out they do have thorns here, so you do have to watch that. So let's see. Let me find my finger here. There it is. Uh, it is in the shade. I need to take more out here. I'm trying to get some sunshine so we can see it better. And I'm still in the shade. Okay, that did it. So you can see right here here where my finger is it is a darker brown color and up here it's more of a red lighter color and that is the new wood so the new wood is what we're going to take I'm going to go ahead and grab this piece right here and bend it over and as you see it did snap but it's not all that woody so this is soft wood so if soft wood just kind of snaps over like that it's not all that fibrous uh, semi soft wood is it would be more fibrous and I would use less rooting hormone and we'll get into rooting hormone in a minute and the hardwood would be very fibrous and it wouldn't have any leaves on it because hardwood is what you take during the winter it's a uh, one-year-old wood in the winter time so I'm gonna go ahead and get some cuttings here and I'm gonna head back to the table and we'll go over what to do with it next so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this long branch right here and a couple others like it and go right back to where its growth is there and then we'll uh, deal with cutting it into smaller pieces at the table. Hey guys, quick sidebar here on tools. So you can use whatever tool you want, a pair of scissors, a sharp knife, a pair of cutters like I have here, just uh, trimmers. What you want is something that's very, very sharp that will cut without bruising the cambium of the uh, wood that you're cutting. So the cambium is the soft part where the water goes up. You don't want to bruise that. You want to actually cut that. So make sure your tools are very sharp, whatever you're using. Also make sure they're clean. So I clean mine after every type of plant I use. Yeah, I do. So if I'm doing uh, Adam's elderberry, before I move to a John's elderberry, I'll clean it. I, I may do a hundred cuts on an Adam's elderberry and I'll only clean it the first time before I do it. And then before I move on to a John's or a Nova elderberry, I will go ahead and clean it again. So I'm grabbing these just out of the shed. I can't remember if I cleaned it last time, so I'm gonna start off by cleaning. The way that I'm gonna clean is I'm just gonna take some regular hand sanitizer here, whatever type you are into, and put a couple squirts on a paper towel. And by that, next I'm just gonna rub it on the tool all along here. And I'm not so much worried about getting dirt off as I am worried about killing any fungus or bacteria or any kind of disease that would spread from plant to plant. So I want to make sure, and this, is, this hand sanitizer will kill any of that stuff. So all I need to do is rub it on the whole area, go ahead and wipe it off, and then we are good to go. So now I'm going to go ahead and make my cuts. Okay guys, I'm here to make up the rooting hormone solution. Uh, for this section of the video. So I use the dip and grow liquid uh, 
rooting hormone solution. That's a picture of what it looks like. You open it up and there's all kinds of warnings on it saying not to get any on your skin and everything. If you have sensitive skin, you might want to use rubber gloves. In here, it does talk about different dosages to use, which is why I like the liquid stuff. So for hardwood cuttings, you use a one to five ratio. For medium, hard, medium softwood cuttings, you use a 10 to one ratio. And for softwood cuttings, you use a 20 to one ratio. So I am working with softwood cuttings here. So I am gonna mix 20 to one. I actually measured this out earlier. So for me, it's a cap and a half uh, of this solution in this particular container here mixed with water and then I fill it up at three quarters or I fill it up three quarters with water so I'm gonna go ahead and mix that up real quick so there's one cap and then about a half and then I'm gonna fill this three quarters of the way up with water and that's about three quarters and now my rooting hormone is ready to go so that's it for this. Let me go ahead and do some more cuttings and then we'll actually use, dip it in the rooting hormone. Okay guys, I have my cuttings here. I just took them off to the new growth here. I do want to point out one thing. I should have showed you earlier that there were these thorns here. The thorns, actually let me pull some of these leaves off here. So the thorns only go off up to that point right there. So what I am going to do is trim those off because I just don't like messing with thorns. I'll toss those aside. The rest of this all the way up, there are no thorns on it. So what we want to do now is take this and cut it into smaller pieces that we can deal with and that will fit into our mispropagation bed and that will be the right size for propagating and rooting out. So what we want to do is take about four internodes and an internode is where each one of these leaves comes in. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four leaves up, and I'm gonna make a cut, okay? And then I'm gonna take and just rip the bottom two off, leaving two leaves on. And leaves actually do what we call perspire. They, they do something called transpire. So to slow down the transpiration, we're going to take a leaf and we're gonna cut it where the vein is coming up the center, we're gonna cut it right in half, right there on that. So once we have that done, and I've already done a couple of them right here, we get them all to the same length, and we put them in the rooting hormone that we just talked about, and we dip them in one, two, three, four, five, about five seconds, shake it off, set it aside, and we'll grab the other ones here, Shake these off, and those are ready to plant and go into our misting bed. So we'll talk about the misting bed next, and then we'll actually go ahead and put these into the ground. So this is my mist irrigation bed here. I have two nozzles here, one here and one right there, two mist nozzles, and they're gonna come on in just a few seconds. I there we go. You can see they are on. So they're both on right now and they're overlapping one another. And what they're doing is they're just spraying a fine mist down on the plants here. And they come on once every five minutes for 10 seconds. And you can see the water kind of dripping off of the leaves here. And I have it set up to come on at 6 a.m. and to shut off at 9 p.m. So it's not running during the night, only during the heat of the day. And that's to prevent transfer transpiration and to keep the water keep the leaves moist so that they don't burn or anything and that way they will have uh, something with photosynthesis to actually allow it to make roots so that's the mist part here when I'm actually planting in a couple of minutes I'll shut these down because I'm gonna have the iPhone real close I don't want to soak yet a couple other things so I have a document right here and it has numbers on the side, uh, over here on the row, on the far left-hand side. And you see it says row 2468. And that row 2 has John's elderberry. Row 4 is non-applicable. Row 6 is Adam's elderberry. Nothing in row 8 yet, but that's where I'm going to be putting the uh, Illinois Everbearing Mulberry that I have. And then you'll notice that in row 14, I also have Illinois Everbearing Mulberry. I took some earlier in the year but they're not doing so well. So I wanted to wait and take some a little bit later in the year. So what I do is I put down a tape measure from the end 
Row two is at two inch mark. Row four is at four and there's nothing there. Row six is where my elderberry is. Row eight is where the mulberry will be. And you can see I'm right on top. I, what I do is I put a piece of wood, a piece of bamboo that came in with a plant here, and that allows me to keep my row straight. So I will have all the rows in here and make sure that you document. So on my document here, I have uh, the quantity that I planted and in the notes section, I have little notes here. So I have an A on that one, I have a B on that one, and I put down here when I planted it. And well, let's see, for A, I used powder rooting, rooted, powdered rooting hormone. And for row B, I still need to mark it, but I use liquid rooting hormone there. Today will be row C because I am in August and I'll have a different day so I will put the date planted and the fact that I'm using liquid rooting hormone there. So real quick, let me talk about the rest of the mist system irrigation bed here. So the mist heads, uh, they're DRAM, D-R-A-M-M -M, mist heads that feed into a uh, one inch PVC pipe here, which goes into a, uh, let's see, a lawn sprinkler here. This runs into an electric wire, which I have back in my shed back there. And that has a Galcon 8056 ACS, I think it is, uh, programmable sprinkler valve that shuts these on and off. And like I said, it's on from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. for uh, every five minutes, it comes on for 10 seconds at a time. So that's how it comes on and off is with the timer. My input is right here and I have another piece going off to the side that's for future use. Right now it's just dead ended and not used. And I go into a water filter here. This water filter is designed to remove any chlorine and stuff like that. So I'm giving it straight filtered water at least. And I'm just coming out of a garden hose there. So the garden hose. Okay guys, so I have my cuttings here. I have the rooting hormone on and I have my post set up here for 26 inches. Uh, I measure off on both sides so I can get a nice straight line here. So I push them in about an inch to an inch and a half uh, and I'm doing about an inch apart on them because they have roots that they do go sideways but they don't really tangle up too horribly much. So uh, they're easy enough to dig out in about four months or so, so it doesn't cause too big an issue. So I'll go ahead and finish putting the rest of these in in a little while. But I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, today we are doing the Gumi and we'll be doing lots of other different plants as far as how to propagate them and do other different things with them on our YouTube channel. So go ahead and subscribe so you can keep up with us. Also, you're welcome to go to greatescapefarms.com and subscribe for our email list. We not only let you know when we put out new YouTube videos, but also we put out a blog post and also any sales that we have on our nursery are posted there. So please feel free to subscribe. If you have any comments, please subscribe or please comment below. Let us know what you think about these videos and our different blogs and all. We appreciate hearing from you. Thank you very much and have a great day.